Hey, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC, and it is review time for the Specialized Stump Jumper, a radically overhauled bike for 2021. Like I've just said, this is the review of the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper. But before I get on with the review, I want to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yep, I know it's early in the video, but it's got to be done. We review all sorts of reasonably priced bikes here at Offroad CC. So does a review of the new Nuke Proof Mega or the brand new Vita Summit tempt you into hitting the subscribe button? I really hope so. Those bikes are coming up soon. With all that jazz out of the way, I can get on with the review. So, if you saw our earlier video, we did a first look at this new stump jumper. And if you saw that, you'll know that I was pretty excited about getting on this bike and having a ride. It is a brand new and refreshed bike for 2021. It's got all new geometry, and on these carbon models, it's got a new suspension layout too. The bike that I have here is the Stump Jumper Expert. Now that's a carbon bike with those new flex stays. Where last year and in previous stump jumpers, they all used the brand's FSR horse link, the new carbon bikes get seat stays which have a small amount of flex rather than a pivot on the chain stay. The flex zones on the seat stays of those new bikes provide the same sort of movement as the pivots that were previously used would, but set up this way I think that it provides a snappier and more lively feeling. It feels like you get fired out of the corners with precision and quite a bit of energy. It is worth noting though that the alloy bikes don't get the flex stays. Those bikes keep the horse link that you would think of as normally associated with an SFR link. I think you'll be hard pushed to feel the difference but I have ridden both and when descending this carbon bike proves itself to be a snappier tour to ride overall. But whether this is purely from those flex days or that's based on a generalization of the frame in total, it is hard to tell. The expert that I have here is the S3 size, which equates to a medium. Now S sizing is a specialized new way to approach a sizing range. So rather than small, medium, large, these bikes are available as sizes S1 through to S6 and you pick your preferred size according to the reach that you like, the effective top tube that you like, and the seat tube length that you want. It is a much better way of playing the sizing game. It means that riders can have a wide choice of bikes depending on their preference for a short or a longer bike. What it does mean, however, is that riders do need to be aware of what geometry figures might suit them before buying. But in a practical sense, there's nothing that a quick sit on a demo bike or a study of some geometry charts of bikes that you've ridden that you know you like won't fix. As I said, this is an expert spec and that costs £4,750. Now, I know I just said that we test the reasonably priced bikes here at Offroad CC and I guess this one is an exception. I needed to test a carbon bike um, because of those flex days and Specialized just had an expert bike to send me. You can get a carbon bike with the flex days in a comp spec for three and a half thousand pounds and the alloy bikes start at 1900 quid. So what do you get for your 4,750 pounds? Well, this bike comes with a Fox Float 34 Performance Elite fork, a Fox Float DPS Performance Elite shock, SRAM G2 RSC brakes, SRAM X01 Eagle and an X-Fusion Manic dropper post. Then there's a smattering of specialised parts pretty much everywhere else. The last thing that you need to know about this bike and about those new bikes is that the range is 29er only and they all have 130mm of rear travel paired with a 140mm fork. Specialized split the range last year with 120mm ST short travel stumpy and 150mm one. This year they put all their eggs in one basket and let 29er wheels rule the roost. It's not a bad idea either, this is a very capable trail bike and if you want more there is always the stump jumper Evo with its 150mm travel to sate all your enduro hunger. Now because you are here for a bike review you probably want to know how this thing rides. 
Now I've been testing this bike on my local trails in the Forest Dean for a couple of months now and where previously I might have been a little bit sceptical about aggressive short travel bikes, this one bucks the trend and I've really liked it. It certainly pedals well and I spent a fair bit of time aboard the last generation stump jumper and this one is worlds apart in terms of pedaling efficiency. This has large amounts to do with the improved geometry, including a 76 degree effective seat angle on this bike and also a stiffer rear end due to that one piece rear triangle. The suspension does still bob a little bit when pedaling hard. It's a specialised trait it seems. There are options on the Fox shocks that are fitted to this bike to ride in trail or lock out the shock when pedalling uphill to accommodate for this bob. But I suspect that any stump jumper owner will see this bit of pedal bob as a trade-off for an active and engaging suspension platform. That suspension platform provides good grip both up and downhill. I rode the bike with the flip chip that's fitted in high and low and I opted to keep it mostly in low. My local riding is pretty much, well no, quite a lot of winch and plummet. We're up and down forest single track quite a lot and as the bike pedals so well, I'll take the downhill gains and keep it in low. In that low position on this S3 bike, the stump jumper gets a reach of 450mm, a head angle of 65 degrees and an effective seat tube angle of 76 degrees. It's also paired with an effective top tube of 605mm. This all adds up to a quietly confident bike that is more stable than its 30 pounds-ish with pedals will belay. The wheelbase comes out at 1200mm and with 432mm chainstays it's stable without a monster trucking feel. The short rear end helps that snappy punching out of the corners feel whilst that slack head angle helps you point and shoot down the rough stuff too. The suspension action is classic stump jumper. It is a little linear, meaning that you might easily find the bottom of the travel on big hits. Considering that the geometry of this bike pushes you to take risks and to go faster and harder, that 130 mm travel will certainly be made the most of. Riding a short travel bike, I think, is like having the trail on loudspeaker in your ears. You aren't cosseted like you are on a longer travel bike. You feel each and every lump and bump. And when things get wild, the stump jumper certainly lets you know about it. That said, there is lots of grip, but not as much as maybe an enduro bike. You can feel this bike chattering over the rough, but nail brake points, nail the speed that you want in the trail and plow into this sort of rough terrain with some certainty and it will see you through without a blink and with plenty of laughs. With spec in mind there are a few ways that you could make your stump jumper better should you purchase one. So first thing get rid of the butcher front and purgatory rear grid 2.3 tyres. The grid casing is flimsy and they offer little much in the way of grip or support. So add a 2.6 inch hillbilly and a butcher grid trail or the like on the back. I went for a butcher on the back and the excellent 2.5 inch WTB verdict on the front and then hit the trails. Given the short seat tube, the bike could also be adorned with a longer drop post I reckon. I reckon that I could fit a 170mm post in here, but it won't be the same for all riders. So I'm guessing Specialised have erred on the safe side here and fitted a 150mm post to the S3. Everything else though is pretty neat. It's surprising how much better the Fox Performance Elite 34 fork with its Grip 2 damper is in comparison with the Rhythm fork found on the Comp models. It offers much more support mid-travel and is a worthy upgrade if you can afford this pricier bike. Overall, I'd say that if you like to feel connected to the trail and you like a bit of steep tech and then you like getting out on some XC blasts the next day, then the stump jumper could be the all-round bike that you are looking for. It's neat, it's well made, it's light and it's well designed, giving riders a hell of a good time and then pedalling back up too without complaint. If you like all the gnar and all the rocks all the time, then I reckon you should turn your attention to the stump jumper Evo. Now that one is our next test bike, due in on Offroad CC on return to Specialised of this one. That's all from me, so thank you very much for watching. If you do want to read about this bike, then the full review is over on www.off.road.cc now. 
I will catch you again with reviews of that nuke-proof Mega and the new Vita Summit. So I'll see you soon.